Hi everyone, and uh, it's Mr. O'Toole here, and this is a first video in a series of videos on surgery. And this one is going to be on ah, oh, you've guessed it. This one is on pain. Now, there were three main problems solving uh, for surgery. First one was pain. Second one was infection, and the third one was blood loss. And we're looking at them chronologically, so we're starting today with pain. Now, surgery, uh, before they solved those problems, would often leave you a little sore. And the reason for that is because they used a big saw. <laughs> See what I did there? Superb. Now then, when we do the videos, you need to have with you some paper and some pens. And the reason for that is, as the video goes along, I will ask you some questions. You'll always know when I'm going to ask you a question because I put on my asking hat. It's a fez. You can see it's red because it's surgery and there's blood everywhere. Now, some of the questions are a bit easy, some of them are a bit harder. When I ask you a question, so you'll see the hat, then of course you pause the video and try and write the answers down and then I'll give you the answers afterwards. Okay, remember this hat is a fez. I must confess some of the questions are a bit tricky. Oh, that was quite good. Now, let's make a start. Okay, here we go then. Right. 1840, which is the start of our period, there were... No anaesthetics. An anaesthetic is something that kills the pain. We have them today. What I'd like you to try and work out, can you, hold on, it's a question, can you name the three types of anaesthetics that were used in the 1840s to try and solve the problem of pain? Have a go. I hope you got them. First of all, of course, we have laughing gas. That was no laughing matter. Secondly, they moved to ether. That wasn't very good either. And thirdly and finally, the best one that they used was, of course, chloroform. Did you get three out of three? I hope so. That's good. Now then, please use the mind maps that I prepared for you. There's loads of information on there. Come and see me or Miss Cayley and you can get some exam questions and then practice, practice, practice. Now, laughing gas, first used in 1799 by Humphrey Davy. Later used in 1844 by Horace Wells. He was a dentist. Didn't really work very well because we're not all uh, affected by laughing gas. And unfortunately for Wells, one of the men he was taking a tooth out uh, the laughing gas didn't work on him. So all the people who came to watch said that it was a fake and they didn't use it. Uh, 1846, a man called Morton uses ether and that was more effective. It did work. But, second question coming up, let's get the asking hat on. There we go. What were the problems using ether? See if you can come up with three. Have a go. Speak to you in a minute. Yeah, what did you get? Well, number one, ether makes people vomit, which isn't very pleasant. Number two, it gave you a bad cough, which could irritate your lungs. Number three, it's flammable. And there were cases where, sadly, uh, the, the ether exploded. And number four, it's quite powerful. So some patients actually slept for days and days, which isn't uh, particularly safe. So ether had problems as well. Then, of course, we come to 1847. This is the year of the big breakthrough. A man called James Simpson discovers chloroform. Basically, he invites a few of his friends around, they have a meal, and then they just sniff chemicals. And luckily, one night in 1847, they sniff chloroform. Simpson wakes up on the floor, his friends are still unconscious, he realises what's happened, 
He takes it further, he does a few scientific experiments, and Simpson has discovered the big breakthrough, which was chloroform. Now, chloroform was better. Number one, the patient is asleep, not feeling any pain. Number two, the patient uh, doesn't have to be operated on so quickly, so the surgeon can take their time. So it was a very, very good step forward. Before chloroform, surgeons like Liston could operate and chop off, amputate a leg in 29 or 30 seconds. Sometimes, of course, they made mistakes because they were rushing, they cut off the wrong part of the body, and it was a bit of a nightmare, really. Fortunately, after chloroform, you would think everything had been solved. It was a great breakthrough. But, question coming up. Can you think of three reasons? There are at least four or five. Can you think of three reasons why people would oppose chloroform? Mm, tricky one. Have a go. Well, what have you got? I hope you've got they don't like change, don't like new ideas. That was often the case in history. Number two, some patients died. The wrong dosage was given. A young girl went in for a uh, toenail operation. Sadly, she died age 15. Her name was Hannah Greener, first person to die from an incorrect dosage of chloroform. Uh, what else have we got? The army doctors, they thought it made the men soft. Uh, religious people opposed it because there's a bit in the Bible which says that women should feel pain during childbirth, so they were against that. And the final one, some women didn't trust doctors. So the idea of being a young woman unconscious, they didn't want that at all. So there was opposition to chloroform. 1847, and the operation, sorry, the opposition continued till about 1853, when Queen Victoria was given it by her doctor, Dr. John Snow, and she was pregnant, it was the birth of her eighth child, and she was given it, and that made people feel a lot more confident. If it's all right for the Queen, surely it's okay for them. And Dr. Snow, a very clever man, he invented, basically he developed a syringe, which meant they could begin to give the correct dosage. So from 1853 onwards, they begin to overcome the problems of opposition to chloroform. So that's sorted then, you would think. 1847, the year of the big breakthrough, the first main problem in surgery has been solved. Great. But 1847 to 1865, what do you think happened to the death rate in surgery? They've just solved pain. The death rate went up. It was called the black period of surgery. Why would more people die? Quick, get the fez. Why did more people die? They've solved the problem of pain. Any ideas? Have a think. Tricky one. They haven't solved the problems of infection and bleeding. So the doctors, the patient is unconscious, they can take their time, they can do deeper, more internal operations. The patient's asleep, so they think they're not going to die from the shock, but their hands were dirty. They still haven't sorted the problem of infection. So germs get into the body and the patients will die from infection. So for surgery to be totally sorted, they had to begin to solve the other problems in the 1860s. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be our second instalment, our second thrilling episode in how they improved surgery. I bet you can't wait, can you? Speak to you soon.